a couple of years ago, we were excited by this basic idea of four players working together to combat at, uh, enemy strongholds. And I, we were just starting to play around with the characters and really what kind of humor we wanted to bring to the, to the franchise. I'll, I'll tell you what the first r version of Dalton <laughs> was. <laughs> and hopefully we could one day get concept art to show this. But like, <laughs> initially, can we talk about this? Yeah, sure, okay. why not? <laughs> <laughs> right. Initially, we had a, a, a sort of 70s inspired direction for a lot of these characters and the, and the world as a whole. And Dalton uh, Brooks was a, he was an actor who would moonlight as a, uh, as a spy. And our first concept art was him straddling a bison in his underwear, holding a martini glass from like this underwear ad that he had done. <laughs> And all the characters had some kind of like weird, bizarre thing that was fun in its own right. But at the end of the day, it was very hard for people to like get behind a character like that and take him seriously and say, "Okay, he's going to go off and save the world." And of course, we changed we changed direction a few times. But that was that was the first iteration of Dalton Brooks. Yeah. Well, then there was of course Jacob, who used to be called Storm, right. which was his code name, and he had this like massive afro and looked like he just stepped off the disco floor. Right. <laughs> and so and then, and then the problem with that was whenever he would be behind cover, you would see this afro moving <laughs> along. <laughs> and by the way, I already had a skill point for it. I was going to call it go with the fro. And like, so I already had all these <laughs> things planned out for it. But yeah, but, but we ended up going through like, a, like I, I, it had been like months of concept art before we finally found like who's going to be our Dalton, who's going to be our, our Nye and our Izzy and our Jacob. And yeah, and I think all of the characters must have changed their hair coloring about 10 times each. Oh, like yeah. at one point Dalton had white hair, no hair. <laughs> right, right. Izzy's been a blonde, brunette. Remember the tweed jacket that Dalton had? For oh, that right. Yeah. He had a tweed jacket and like bell bottoms and like it was weird. It was, just, it was just odd, but fun. We learn on the fly and with every change, you know, sometimes the change starts off painful, but then we get in the game and we look at it. We're like, okay, now for whatever reason I take this, I, I understand the world a little bit more and it seems like it fits. It's not all about, oh, is it funny versus not funny? It just like, does this fit the universe? And it's all about like us sort of coming up with like what are what are the rules and what are like what makes this universe tick? And it was the same thing with Ratchet. Luckily with Ratchet, it was, I mean everything was just bizarre. So you could just throw in a lot of stuff there, and it didn't matter. But here, it's a difficult cut when you make it. But then when you get it, and you're like, oh, okay, this makes everything so much stronger. Because now like I'm super focused on being my character and going off on this adventure. Yeah, I think that's one thing that we've just learned over the years is you do have to kill your darling sometimes. You know, sometimes we'll come up with an idea, we'll push it, we'll present it, and you know we'll rationalize why this has to be in the game. And then, you know, you end up having to just let go and cut it. And then you kind of look back and say, oh, yeah, you know, that, why, why was I pushing so hard for that? You know, it could have worked, but it doesn't work with the type of game we're making. We knew that this wasn't going to be Resistance, and we also knew that this wasn't going to be Ratchet. So beyond that, we weren't really sure. So we, it was all about experimentation for all of us. And some people wanted to cling on to the more, you know, goofy, campy sensibilities. Other people wanted to push it more in the Resistance uh, direction. And we kept just going back and forth until we found just sort of the right... Um, the right flavor of humor, which is a sort of like action movie inspired humor that you'd see in like Lethal Weapon or Die Hard or movies like that, 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 that a lot of us at Insomniac grew up on. So it's been a great journey for a writer to be able just to write like the same property in all these different ways, just trying to find the right balance and landing on one that we think is just right. That certainly uh, occurs in the uh, recording sessions. We work a l with a lot of top talent who've worked on many games, Jennifer Hale, Brian Bloom, Ali Hillis, and Kari Payton. And they keep saying to us, like, this is a lot of fun. We have fun reading these lines. There's a, a certain level of wit and humor in, injected in all of them. We just decided to write what's fun for the characters. And if the players want to, want to tune them out and just and chat, they can. But we wanted to make sure that these characters had identities beyond just gameplay, that they actually had personalities that you understood and you knew how the dynamics of the group would change over the course of the game. There's certainly a dynamic between single player and uh, cooperative experiences. You know, with single player, it can be almost like reading a book where you are having your, this own personal experience as you're you know, watching each movie and, and seeing how each level plays out. With a four player experience, we realize that there is some chatter amongst the players. Uh, for the most part, you know, we're very conscious of having this team of characters together and having that banter really get across their own personality. You know, playing games like uh, you know, Left 4 Dead is a great example of where you get a little sense of who these characters are just by the, the, having a conversation. And we're not restricted by a lot of single player type games where you have one character and they don't really quite have anyone to talk to, so they have to kind of talk to them themselves. You're gonna understand more than just personalities for sure. We want you to know at least the broad strokes of how they ended up at Overstrike. I don't know if we're gonna answer every single thing. We wanna leave enough of these characters past open to explore in future installments, but you're definitely gonna have a good sense of like how they got to where they are uh, and how they met each other.
we and Brian were talking about this like three years ago. I was afraid that having two guys and two girls, it would look too symmetrical. It would look too much like we put together a school dance. But now I can't imagine it any other way. Like I think it just like like hearing these characters interact with each other and going through the environments. I, I, I like that we don't just have you know the token female character, that there's actually more than one female hero in the game. And they're both badass. And they're both just as strong and capable as the other two characters. So it's not about male versus female. It's all just about this team and how they interact together. Yeah, I think we were very uh, conscious of having aspirational characters that people would want to play. We know that a lot of guys like to play as, as girl characters. And again, as TJ mentioned, we don't want that one token girl character with the three guys. So it seemed right just to have that balance. There's definitely chemistry that we explore between a couple of the characters. But really, like these are characters that are focused on getting the job done. So beyond chemistry, there's not going to be any love triangle or anything, at least for now. Who knows? And future, it would be yeah. kind of awkward if, like, I was playing as Naya <laughs> and and he was Dalton and something <laughs> were to happen. You know. <laughs> <laughs> For this game, we're only going to be really concentrating on Overstrike 9. But the idea is that, of course, you know, they're a privatized contact group, and they're run by this man named uh, Lyndon Burgess. Uh, so the idea is that he does have other people in his employ that may be doing other things around the world at any given time. Well, I don't, give, I don't want to give too much away, yeah. but they have discovered Fuse over 50 years ago, and it's taken a while for the government to really figure out what this stuff is. And they haven't really been able to harness it until recently. And I think one thing that was really fun for the team to explore is the idea that Fuse can mix with any Earth element and make it more volatile and unstable. And so Ted Price actually was coming up with all these different uh, chemicals and properties. He was like, how about melanite? How about ferrofluids? And so that just made the, you know, the team could just go wild with their imagination on what would happen if you had ferrofluids mixed with this weird alien chemical. You're going to see Fuse used in some very interesting ways, I can tell you that. So I think we want them to understand how Fuse works and what it can do. We want to leave it open so that we can explore more things with it down the road. Yeah, I think it comes down to the experimentation of Fuse and um, how we're going to surprise people at various points on how Raven is figuring out ways to use this Fuse technology against them. And some isn't always physical. Some of it is psychological. He said hints, with a wink and a hints, smile. Right. <laughs> uh, I, th I think for me, it's the uh, it's the it's going to be the last segment of the game, uh, and I, I can't say what it is unfortunately, but it's it's pretty awesome, and I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I don't think it's something that I've seen in a video game, and it's definitely something that's uniquely insomniac, and it's something that when you when you pitch it on paper, you're like, are we seriously doing this? And then when you get it in, all of a sudden you're walking around, and everything's done, and the art the artists have done their thing. It's the coolest thing that that I've seen it come out of this company in a long time. I'm very excited about. It. I hope that we, act, that we see the fans start to discuss the world and the characters and the sort of mythology. I think one of the most rewarding things about being a Ratchet and Clank writer was getting to see people love the characters so much that they would actually write you know, Ratchet and Clank fan fiction. They would come up with their own sort of theories about what happened at certain you know, points of the lore. So I'm hoping that we can get a, a similar thing here with a very different type of project, but I want people to care about the characters' world so much that they start those discussions.